What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name's Michael Roman. This has been an absolutely crazy week in the MCU. First, Kevin Feige talking about the X-Men, saying the deal's going better than expected. And as soon as he's greenlit here, probably in the next six months, they're gonna start working on that, which is awesome to hear. Also, the Rousseaus, in a more than overzealous tone, when asked about the new villain in Avengers Endgame, clearly and definitively stating that Thanos was done and retired, that he had done what he came to do and was finished now. Begging the question, is there an actual new villain in this movie? And if there is, who might it be? Now, we're going to go ahead and base everything today on the comics, but also cash in our favorite Than theory and play our own version of one of Marvel's most beloved series. What if Galactus is actually an Avengers Endgame? And if so, can the Avengers defeat him? Guys, this is not even close to one of the craziest theories surrounding Avengers Endgame, as there's actually a ton of comic book evidence for this. I'm going to break that all down and cast my vote for who would win in that fight. But first, if you could hit the subscribe button, we're giving away two. PlayStation 4 Pros, as well as a whole slew of other Marvel related stuff. All you have to do, hit the subscribe button, leave a like and a comment on this video, then smash the notification bell, and if you want, stick around to the end of the video, I'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there. Now the linchpin to any argument or theory is the logic for which that argument or theory is based on, and without it, these theories sound very flat and flimsy. You could basically say any superhero or any supervillain is going to be an Avengers Endgame, but a lot of them wouldn't make sense. There would be no logic behind it, and there'd actually be no evidence for it. If you remember, this movie was originally called Infinity Gauntlet, and two of the main players from Infinity Gauntlet that have not made their appearance in the MCU, while well, one pseudo has, is both Adam Warlock and Galactus. Yeah, that's right. Galactus is in Infinity Gauntlet. In fact, he's a major player and has more than one run in with Thanos. Even though he's defeated the first time, he returns with a whole posse to defeat him the second. Here you can clearly see on the cover of Infinity Gauntlet number five, Galactus has returned with said posse to rematch with Thanos who is sitting in the foreground pointing up to him defiantly, still wearing the Infinity Gauntlet. So if we're basing this argument alone on comic book precedent, Galactus would actually be a forerunner for the new villain in Avengers Endgame. Another key piece of this argument is that the Avengers would not have to engage him in battle to have him be present in the movie. Remember, there's an all CGI character that converses with Doctor Strange that we have yet to identify. Now, some have guessed the Living Tribunal, such as myself, and I think my argument for that still holds clear. However, that could easily also be Galactus, and he doesn't have to be engaged in battle in this movie, but rather set up for a future fight down the road in Avengers 5 or 6. Introduce him as a looming threat who's been awakened by Thanos' snap, the devourer of worlds who can now more easily devour worlds considering half of the universe's defenses have been diminished. This idea of Galactus showing up as a looming threat makes much more sense than him showing up in Act 1, say, than having to lead up to this finale battle between Thanos and Galactus and the Avengers. Even that seems just a little too impossible for the Rousseaus and the writers to do any justice. But... If we're willing to suspend disbelief on just that one key point for a second, then the only last obstacle we would have to hurdle is the tricky rights business that Galactus is actually still owned by Fox and will be until the Disney acquisition is complete. Like I said, some six months from now when Kevin Feige said he would start working on the X-Men. Here's the thing though. We know that some years back, Marvel Studios took meetings with Fox both before and after that most recent iteration of the Fantastic Four was released and flopped and it was heavily rumored they were specifically going after Silver Surfer and Galactus. While we don't know the exact particulars of what happened in those meetings, there was some loose confirmation that Fox received some properties for their TV shows and presumably Marvel had to receive something in trade. Now, while that's all a moot point now, as Disney will be acquiring Fox and all of these properties will be under Kevin Feige's control, it's yet to be seen which characters, if any, were obtained that early in the game. However, if the rights to Galactus were obtained, then he easily could have been on the table during the writing process. We all know that Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame were shot simultaneously. So the idea of them somehow trying to squeeze in Galactus now that this deal is about to go through, feeling like they're in the clear six months before it gets approved. Also, Disney is super smart and they know that things can fall apart at the last minute. That's why they haven't greenlit Kevin Feige to do a single thing with the X-Men. Now you can be guaranteed Kevin Feige has been having discussions. All those guys that they say get together and go on those barbecues for the weekend and talk about all the possibilities and ideas, 
They've started talking about it, but they haven't done anything specifically and official. They wouldn't do that with Galactus unless a trade was already in place. So now that we've actually gotten past the obstacle of the rights to Galactus, and we've considered that they might put him in as an ancillary character more logically than a full finale battle, it's still possible. Like I said, the comic book precedence is one of the key things that I like to go off of, and I think that Marvel Studios has proven when and if at all possible, they do the same. Obviously, it's been super hard for them to translate all of the ideas and all of the characters. The Marvel Universe is so incredibly expansive, and even with 20 movies, there's just not enough time to do every character justice. We've also heard in the past, characters like Adam Warlock and Beta Ray Bill have been in scripts. They've been very close to getting sent to CGI, but they just didn't want to work them in when it didn't make sense. But if we assume for a second that all is good and well and that Galactus's rights were actually procured by Marvel Studios via trade with Fox long before the writing for Infinity Gauntlet was ever complete, long before the name was ever changed to Endgame, and they decided they wanted to keep with the original story from Infinity Gauntlet, then all the possibilities are back on the table, including not only having Galactus teased or show up in a small cameo, but a full-out battle with Thanos and or the Avengers. And if Galactus should clash with the Avengers in Endgame or down the road, could the Avengers actually win? And that is a great question. Now, Thanos has defeated Galactus in the past. Like I said, Thanos actually smashes him between two planets. And this is before Galactus comes back. For the rematch but there have been some other people who have defeated him along the way namely squirrel girl yes squirrel girl the person who defeated thanos also defeats galactus it's a little bit ridiculous that's why i throw that in let's rule her out but there have been some others now if you guys remember in the myriad of theories we've had flying around avengers endgame the marvel zombies has been teased quite a bit both because well half of the avengers are dusted but also because Hela can command the dead, and there was a thought that Thor might return, grab Hela and Marvel Zombies, and they would take on Thanos. Well, those same Marvel Zombies actually defeated Galactus. It's an absolutely crazy comic book run. If you get a chance to read it or can pick it up, if you find it somewhere, it's a more recent comic book. It's not that expensive. It's worth the read. It's crazy. Zombie Hulk is worth it just by himself. But there is an idea that the zombies could show up in Avengers 4, and if they were to face Galactus, the precedence would be they would win. But let's rule them out for a second. Let's also consider the X factor of Silver Surfer. Silver Surfer was able to thwart Galactus's hunger, I think, one time and defy him, but I don't want to involve Silver Surfer in this argument of whether the Avengers could beat Galactus, because if they also had to fight his Herald in Silver Surfer, I think the answer is a definitive no. Now, yes, of course Galactus would come attached with Silver Surfer in this movie, it opens up a whole other can of worms, and there were some very strong arguments that Silver Surfer was going to show up in Infinity War. Remember, there was that leak about who got cast as him, and then the actor who was rumored to have been cast as him, it showed up in the IMDb back in Infinity War's original IMDb leak. Silver Surfer was cast. Guys, that is a whole nother tangent, and I literally could do a whole nother video on it. Dot, dot, dot. I will do a whole nother video on it, especially if we get any more new evidence leading into Endgame. But we have to leave that out for this argument because this argument is hard enough to write in the first place. So considering Silver Surfer as an X factor, but not knowing which side he would fall on. If he fell on the side of the Avengers, I think it's clearly in the Avengers' favor. If Silver Surfer is on the side of Galactus, I think it's clearly not. But the Avengers have Captain Marvel in this movie. If the Avengers did not have Captain Marvel joining them in Avengers Aim Game, if she was completely out of the equation, I would say there'd be no chance. They just don't have someone on that power level who can fight someone like Galactus. However, we've seen from the Captain Marvel trailer and from the words of Kevin Feige himself that Captain Marvel can move planets. It's insane. And since one of the ways Galactus was defeated was by Thanos smashing him between two planets, which, shout out to Infinity War, and like I said, they are trying to do the best they can with the comics the best way they can. They definitely had Thanos throw a moon at Tony. It's an unforgettable scene. And this is them harking back to the original comic material they're trying to do justice by. Of course, it would be insane and completely visually ridiculous to have someone standing on a planet and then get smashed between two planets. The It just doesn't quite work the same way visually as they can explain 
in the comics, right? You can do a lot of things with the animation and stills in a comic frame that if you try to translate to the realism of cinematography, just wouldn't work. Speaking about the realism of cinematography, trying to have Galactus in frame while the Avengers fight him would be absolutely impossible as well. So I think I would have to cast my vote for the Avengers with Captain Marvel, for Galactus without Captain Marvel, for the Avengers if Silver Surfer ends up on their side, for Galactus if Silver Surfer ends up on his side, and if there's no Silver Surfer, but there is a Captain Marvel, and Thanos is in play, then it becomes a battle royale between Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet, all the Avengers, and Galactus. And then, what if the Fantastic Four show up, and they bring the Marvel Zombies with them, and then lo and behold, it's not Reed Richards, it's Franklin Richards, and he brought Thor, and now Thor is Rune King Thor, and then, what's even crazier than that, is that the Skrulls and the Kree show up, they want to battle there too, this is awesome. The CGI bill has officially hit $100 billion. The movie is 17 hours long. I mean, who's not trying to go see that? I literally take all my money. If the tickets are $1,000, I'll take five. Quickly, let's get into the giveaway stuff before I let you go. We're giving away two PlayStation 4 Pros, as well as a whole ton of other Marvel stuff we'll be announcing in the coming weeks. All you have to do to win any of it, including the PlayStations, is hit the subscribe button, leave a like and a comment on this video, then smash the notification bell because the more videos you like and comment on, the better chance you have of winning. My name is Michael Roman. This is everything always. We like to talk about Galactus and the MCU and all sorts of things like that. So if you enjoyed today's video, stick around. We'll be posting again real, real soon.